just doing a Conrod bearing replacement, preventative measure on an E92 M3 with 112,000 miles on. Um, and we've taken out these quite horrific bearings, lower and upper, from cylinder number three. And we're quite surprised how bad they are. For the lower one to be in the same condition as the upper, it's extremely um, rare. And they've also contracted when you rest them against a normal size bearing, they've narrowed down. And that's also correct because they were both stuck around the crankshaft journal. They weren't in the cap and they weren't on the rod. They hadn't spun, the locating tabs were still present and they were sat evenly distributed between the cap and the rod, but they, um, they were tight. So when you took the cap off, the cap came off and the bearing stayed contracted around the crankshaft journal, which tells you it's got super hot and, um, and changed shape and, and gone narrower. Um, and we just thought it'd be interesting to see, I'm going to do a plastic gauge measurement check on that. We do them on every single cylinder, every cylinder journal, uh, therefore cylinder, um, on every bearing job we do. Um, and I've got my data sheet here, I've just been working through. I'm now on cylinder number three and I've, I've been putting ACL bearings in here and all the bearing clearances of the ACLs are 0 0.050 which is great. It's what we'd expect and what we want. Here's the rest of them. Some fairly worn ones, especially cylinder number one upper, but yeah, this takes the biscuit. This cylinder number three, this is very, very close to spinning, I'd say. Um, and crankshaft journal wise, no massive scratches or issues on there, apart from some shadowing, some sort of milky patterns on there, um, but relatively polished still hasn't seemed to have done any gouging or massive damage, but even in the oil that was coming out of this journal hole, we could see and feel that there was metal particles. So there's definitely a breakup of bearing, which is obviously evident by these Conrad bearings for cylinder number three. So what we're gonna do now is do a plastic gauge measurement check and see what the clearance is. Out of interest, here's the plastic gauge system and the small little pieces of plastic you put in, squash it and then read off the gauge to see where we are. Um, and it'd be just interesting to see, it might be a boring video, it might come back quite normal, but I'm um, hoping to see some difference on these ones, specifically because they've contracted and they've worn, uh, to see if there's much clearance difference on these worn bearings. And here's that lower bearing that I've just placed back in the cap, and if you've ever replaced bearings before, you'll know that these are an extremely tight fit, they have to snap into place, and this is completely loose, um, and it shows there where it doesn't meet because it's contracted because it's just simply got so hot the bearing is naturally contracted inboard so we've got a gap on this side and also a large gap on this side and look how close that was to spinning so when they spin it's because they contract and the locating tabs now come out of their holes and then just allowed just to slip past that hole and then not laterally but slip as in rotate um, and then it will just keep on rotating if the upper one does the same as well. Some people say that the tabs wear down, that's incorrect. The tabs, uh, the tabs stay there until they contract enough that they then slip and they go that way. And then once they've rotated and spun several times, then the tabs wear against the cap and the comrod um, and then disintegrate to nothing basically. Um, but yeah, that's quite an interesting thing to see how loose that worn bearing is in the cap. But I'm still gonna put it back in and do a plastic gauge measurement check. So I've done the plastic gauge measurement and the closest I'm seeing is 0 0.076, which is absolutely on the limit of BMW's tolerance. That is the, uh, that's on the larger side. So there's possibly too big a gap there for the oil to get through. Really what we wanna be seeing is about 0 0.050. What we commonly see with BMW is 0 0.038. And um, with the ACLs, we see between 3.8 and 5.0, sometimes a 5.0 standard. Um, but yeah, 7.6 is far too much. It's on the absolute limit, which is probably why the engine is still running and wasn't knocking. But um, when you look at these bearings, you see not only the visual wear, but the layers up on this end here, different layers. There's probably about five visual layers you can see. And not only have we got copper, but we've got coloration like blues, greens, like some yellows, and there's also lots of debris, small impact marks, which you might not be able to pick up in this, but looks like it's been pummeled with something. There's even a, like a little dent over here, 
and that's just where there's particles of the bearing that have probably been breaking up and just going around around specifically as they're letting go from that location there for example as they're going past something they'll probably just keep on impacting it but it seems like this car might have got away with it sort of just done comrade bearings absolutely at the perfect time because the journal seems okay um the clearance here is obviously too bad to reuse but that's fine because we're never going to be reusing those we're going to go with the rest of the job and now do um acl bearings which you've got here in the packet so i'll put a set of acl bearings in next check the clearance and then see what we're looking at so we've got an average with the new ACL bearings, an average of 0 0.050. Um, it does look wider at one end, but it doesn't actually meet the 0 0.038, um, whereas it does meet the 0 0.050. So sometimes you'd say in between. If you could definitely at one end get a 0 0.38 up there, then you would say between 3.8 and 5.0. But in this case, I'm going to go more to the bias of a 5.0 because I can't actually get the 3.8 to match it. So that's good. That's a great improvement definitely what we wanted to see with ACL bearings um, and journal looks like it might have survived so we'll have another look round the back with a mirror um, but if all is well then we can go with that new set of bearings and, um, and the owner can be very grateful that he got this done just in the nick of time so well done to the owner for um, having his comrade bearing done comrade bearing shells done as preventative measure so what I'm also going to do on this one the C92 M3, the S65 engine, cylinder number three that was particularly bad and we can see metal particles in the oil um, around that journal and that was clearly deformed and the clearance issue was very poor at 0 0.076. Um, I'm going to do uh, an oil sample, so we always use Miller's oils and here's a brand new clean sample. And I'm going to go over to the sump which still has some old oil in it and before we drain that I'm going to take a sample. I haven't actually scraped the bottom of that, but didn't get a huge amount, did I, there? But there, we're just starting to fill that up. So I'm gonna get that somebody to help me tip that up when I've got both hands available. Send that oil sample off to Miller's and see what it comes back with. If we get um, a green tick, then obviously the sampling, shall we say, probably isn't the be all and end all. Nothing to do with Miller's, but just the fact that it doesn't actually indicate comrade bearing wear. Um, if we get a red cross then excellent, that is telling us that it was worthwhile doing sampling um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what it says. So now I've taken my sample of oil from the sun, I fill out the Miller's oil report, I've got matching reference numbers on the sheet, data sheet that goes to Miller's with this and also the label that gets stuck on the oil so it can be identified. Obviously I haven't put the customer's registration for data protection purposes, I've just called it BMW 1. Uh, so we're going to send that off to Miller's and then in a few days time we'll get that report back and it'll be interesting to see if we get a red cross or a green tick and what comments there are reference the oil wear versus what we now know was an extremely risky, close to spinning Conrad Behrens shell set in cylinder number three. So what I thought was the end of the video and what was a bad set of bearings, which is cylinder number three, was almost nothing compared to what I've just taken out of cylinder number eight, which is amazing that the engine was still running without any knocking noise. That is um, horrible to see. C totally copper, not even any layers anymore. That is gone through all the top layers and now we're just seeing pure sort of copper color with uh, issues and sort of break up and scratches on the bearing um, so we've also got some small little lines on the crankshaft journal this one's a little bit more hazy the bearing was both both bearings were hadn't spun the cap locating tabs and the comrade locating tabs were still in there but we've got a uh, what is a polished line what it would have been like originally in that location there and the rest of it is a bit hazy but amazingly seems to be visually good i know we can't really tell with just visually and fingers but there is also some markings what you'd call some imprints or marring just up there and there um which you can't really do anything about um obviously we can advise that somebody might want the crankshaft possibly checked or polished but nobody realistically ever goes for that because of the sheer work involved uh, so crankshaft to get the crankshaft out is an engine out job so it's gearbox out engine out and then a partial strip down to get the crankshaft out um, most people just admit that well they were lucky and they have to run with that 
to be fair. Um, so yeah, that is another good indication why this car is a little bit higher, I suppose, at 112,000 miles. Um, but uh, why well, it is a good thing to consider Comrade bearings, even if you think that they might be absolutely fine. You just never know until you take them out and start looking at them like this. Um, you just don't know what they're like. So I've just taken out the final set, which is cylinder number four, this one over here. And it's quite amazing to think that that one and that one, four and eight, are running on the same journal. And yet, look at the state of that bearing set and that one comparably. I mean, that is worn visually. You can see wear patches and you can see copper, but you could argue that's still what you'd call serviceable, as in it was still in the car running and it probably still will carry on running for many, many thousand miles, but these clearly won't. I and mean, if you have a look at the journal on this one, how perfect and polished that is, that's exactly what you want to see on a crankshaft journal. So this one journal runs cylinder number uh, eight, which we just looked at, and four that we're just looking at now as well. So quite interesting to see the differences between two Conrad Baron shell sets on the same journal. So it's a week on and we've got our oil analysis back. Um, we sent it away on the 21st of May. Uh, so there's three things I want to show you on this report that match the form that I filled out. It's the fact that it was the 21st of May, the date, the registration they've put down is BMW, or I did put BMW 1, but they've just put BMW, and the mileage, which was 112749. Um, and we've got the report back, so it's a week later, it's now the 28th of May, exactly a week after, and interestingly, it's showing as satisfactory. Um, so now what I'm about to say it doesn't it's not picking on any particular um, oil uh, analysis company we use Miller's all the time we think they're great the products and the support they're very good and, and good for us um, but whether you were at the oil lab or Blackstone or anybody uh, any of the big oil analysis companies um, I'd hope that they'd probably be doing similar sort of analysis process I suppose but what I'm trying to get across or say is that amazingly it's come back as satisfactory and this is the oil that was in that engine that we just looked at that had those terrible comrade bearings um, so regardless of even said even whether it's got a green tick or a red cross there are some notes down here and it says analysis reveals the oil to be in good condition and suitable for further use well yeah that probably the the oil probably was um, where metals, this is the interesting bit, where metals, uh, where metal analysis reveals all levels to be satisfactory. Well, that's probably um, true as well at the point. Um, but as we can see, the bearings were in a completely different sort of, they, they tell a different story is what I'm trying to say. So oil sampling, if you're trying to decide whether Comrade bearings need doing or not on your car, oil sampling might not be the best option for you. Oil sampling is excellent, say if you've got a fresh engine or you've just had the Conrad bearings done and that every oil service after, every one, you do oil sampling or every other one, but basically you've got a benchmark where you know that the engine is in good condition and then you continue to sample going forward, then that will help tell you if there's any sudden spikes or, or can a continued rise in wear metals but trying to just do one oil sample to decide whether the Comrade bearings need doing isn't probably um, the best option and I think this report probably tells tells the story really because although we've got PB which is lead so lead is in Comrade bearings we've got uh, FE ferrous metal uh, we've got a copper as well which is in um, bearings that tells you there's a little bit of wear in a parts per million basis but it does say that wear metal analysis reveals all levels to be satisfactory boron and molybdenum we always get lots of high amounts in especially if it's a castrol edge or castrol supercar for instance we've got a little bit of aluminium which might be in the bearing material and then na is sodium i think um but yeah interestingly we've got the report back saying that um it's okay to carry on so if somebody was just doing oil sampling on that engine that we've just taken apart which had 112,000 miles on it and um, they were just doing oil sampling took a sample sent it off got the report back says 
carry on, no problem. He'd carry on driving it, thinking everything was fine. But I don't think those Comrade bearings were fine. Um, I think lots of people probably agree with that, what they've just watched. The bearings were at the end of their life. They hadn't actually expired yet, but they weren't too far away. And I definitely don't want this video to come across as any sort of scare tactics. It's just about education. And yes, we do Comrade bearing jobs and we obviously um, do that as a business and so do lots of other people but it's more about trying to prevent this failure i'd much rather save somebody's engine by doing a comrade bearing preventative maintenance than get involved in having to change the engine or rebuild the engine or tell somebody the bad news that it's too late the crankshaft is worn so hopefully this video is informative and interesting and if you've got any questions on the process or what we find what we do here at reedish motorsport let us know and we'll be happy to help you